Good evening. Welcome to South Brunswick High School, Hunter and everybody right, judge. Um, please stand and help Ms. Catherine take your third invitation. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, bless all who serve us, who have dedicated their lives to the ministry of others. All the teachers of our school who labor so patiently with so little appreciation. All who wait upon the public, the clerks in the stores who have to accept criticism, complaints, bad manners, selfishness at the hands of a thoughtless public. Bless the mailman, the drivers of streetcars and buses who must listen to people who lose their tempers. Bless every humble soul who in these days of stress and strain preaches sermons without words. In the name of him who calls us to be the servants of all. Amen. Remain standing for the presentation of colors by South Coast High School J. Arches. Oh, words, arch. We're going to change our agenda this <coughs> tab. We have two others um, tonight, two members of the table. And uh, we're going to move those to the front while our judge has a previous engagement she needs to get to. But before that, she, she's going to administer my oath first. And I went to South Brunswick. I'm a graduate of my fourth year. Her father was my principal. So it's very special for me to have her. And also in my family.
Thank you for bearing with this for just a second. Connie Enos, Director of Fine Arts, is going to help me out with this. We have the winners of the 2018 Superintendent's Holiday Card Contest winner in the house, four recipients. We'll start with Ben Phelps, first grade, Jesse May, Monroe Elementary School. Come on.
Next on the list, we have Kylie Blum, who is no stranger to winning awards, by the way. Fifth grader at Jesse Mae Monroe Elementary School. Next up, we have Anna Garcia Cardenas, 8th grade, Leland Middle School. Obviously, I tried to complicate that. Uh, thank you all for your help. So next up, we've got some uh, phenomenal people in Brunswick County. That's no secret, guys. So, uh, real quick, 11 months ago, I started working here in the schools. I was the news guy before that. I would report on schools, on Brunswick County schools, I knew, you know, there were some, some great folks in it, but I didn't really know. And then I started working in the schools, and I started realizing what, what amazing things are going on that people never know about, that they just don't know. It's not their fault. They just don't know because they're on the outside looking in, not on the inside looking out. Now I'm on the inside, and I see it. If I'm having a bad day, if I'm stressed, for whatever reasons, I will take a lunch break and go just pick a school, whichever one I'm closest to, and I'm gonna walk down the halls of it because I guarantee you, you will see something amazing going on inside one of the, the schools at any given moment, and it changes your day around. Some of the amazing people often don't get the spotlight. But then we went through that whole uh, hurricane mess, and it forever changed uh, our school year Obviously, we know that. We're lucky, though, we did have time. Hurricanes gave us time to plan things out, uh, get the schools closed down so that everybody, family, Brunswick County families, could prepare for a worst case scenario. So families could find safe harbor, so that we could find a safe place to ride out the storm. And Brunswick County schools provided many of those folks of that safe harbor that safe place to ride out the storm. It would not have been possible without some of the folks in here. Uh, we call these obviously dedicated employees, but tonight we are called hurricane heroes. You've heard that line before, some heroes don't wear a cape. Well, that's you. These employees helped transport countless people to safe places. They help transport resources to places they needed to be. This all going on before the storm, during the storm, after the storm. Uh, they served, they catered to people in the shelters. So we're going to begin with some folks who couldn't make it up. Oh yeah, I, I, I like to, you know. 
is winning. So I'm going to name you. Everybody deserves some recognition. And so we're going to first go through some of the names of folks who couldn't make it out tonight, that worked in the shelters, that worked in transportation, that served food, that helped everybody get through the storm. Patricia Benson in transportation, Natalie Rosie, assistant principal, Ernestine Bryant, child nutrition, Richard Callender, transportation, and Ralph Kennedy, maintenance, Daryl Cheers, Daryl Cheers, chief accountability officer, Jennifer Creighton, Negron, theater of arts, Brenda Dixon, custodian. Sharon Dudley, transportation. Tometo Evans, transportation. Kasira Harrelson, child nutrition. Sakitha Hemingway, transportation. Brian Hewitt, custodian. Kenya Hewitt, teacher. Frankie Hewitt, Transportation, McKenna. William Holden, Transportation. Brian Eisenhower, Transportation. Mikhail Johnson Sanderson, Transportation. Linda Lafferty, Transportation. Terry Leffler, you're here, hold that spot. <laughs> Rodney Lockerbie, Maintenance. Luis Lopez Valles, Custodian. Amber Marco, Child Nutrition. St Michael Stanley, there's two. One in transportation, one here. Troy Nettle, maintenance. Kenneth Oberprill, transportation. Jessica Abrosta, Child Nutrition. Dawn Ozuski, custodian. Bonnie Osborne, TA and transportation. James Potter, Transportation. Bobby Rankin, Maintenance. Gwen Ratliff, Transportation. Stephen Ryder, Transportation. Denise Ribble, Teacher. Strassi Robbins, Jr., Custodian. Christine Roman, Transportation. Tim Smith, Maintenance. Perry Smith, Maintenance. Jesse Smith, Transportation. Rachel Stanton, Child Nutrition. Ken Swain, Maintenance. Janet Tosca, Transportation. Thomas Tramposh, Transportation. Sheila Ball, Hayward. Cynthia Williams, Transportation. Elizabeth Williams, Transportation. Walter Wilson, Transportation. Finally, not here tonight, Paul Red in maintenance. Now stand when you hear your name called Hurricane Hegos, who could make it out tonight. Carol Bell, custodian. Bobby Taylor, transportation. Kim Brown, assistant principal. Maddie Bryant, child nutrition. Jonathan DeBerry, assistant principal. Animal, Animal Goncalves, maintenance. Kim Harmon, maintenance. Terry Leff, custodian. Ruth Maloney, custodian. Kevin Marsh, custodian. Barbara Mason, child nutrition. Carmeco Murray, Child Nutrition. Donnie Myers, Custodian. Robert Parker, Child Nutrition. Linda Pluger, Child Nutrition. Mark Pluger, Custodian. Greg Chusky, Project Manager. Michelle Smith, Child Nutrition, Transportation. Larry Smith, maintenance supervisor. Michael Stanley, assistant principal. Janice Bolt, custodian. And Willie Williams, transportation. 
a big round of applause for who we call Hurricane Heroes. Dr. Oates has a word for We can't express enough the gratitude that we have for all of the Hurricane Heroes. When we started the list of folks who contributed to that particular time in our history here in Brunswick County, we referred to them as employees. But I need for you all to know that employee is not what you are. To us here, your family. Your family that sticks together during times of crisis. Your family that looks after each other. And that is what you have demonstrated, not just during a hurricane, but that has extended into our normal, everyday practice. And for that, we want to just say that we truly appreciate everything that you have done and that you continue to do. A round of applause again. So like three months ago, we were supposed to have this big employee of the year celebration. It was gonna be a secret, you know, I had these cards that I was going to reveal the, uh, the, uh, the winners. And uh, well, that hurricane, uh, Florence derailed that celebration for the 2018 employees of the year. But we got you in here. And we're still gonna give you what I like to call BCS shout outs, but this is just some recognition uh, that you deserve, you know, it's one day of the year, but every day of the year, you're doing extraordinary things. So we begin with uh, the leader of a school, the principal. They set the tone for the schools, and we've got some good ones. They are leaders who expect, encourage, and empower so if I could get our 2018, 2019 Principal of the Year up here, Dr. Rick Hessman, Belleville Elementary School. Instructional support staff are vital to a successful school environment. Uh, we had three amazing finalists in the category of instructional support staff. So please stand when I call your name. Peg Bourne named the finalist when she was assistant principal at Belleville Elementary last year, now principal of Southport Elementary this year. Ivory Dion Barry, school counselor at Shiloh Middle School. And your 2018 Instructional Support Employee of the Year, Melissa Pittman, nurse at Cedar Grove Middle School. Did she make it out tonight? I didn't see her on the list, but a round of applause for Melissa Pittman. Administrative support staff are lifesavers. Anybody who relies on those that they help keep us from uh, getting overwhelmed on any given day. The three finalists for administrative support staff of the year are phenomenal. Please stand when I call your name. Danica Holdsworth, administrative assistant at Belleville Elementary. Megan Hefley, Administrative Assistant at Central, Central Office. She couldn't make it tonight, but a round of applause for Megan. And your 2018 Administrative Support Employee of the Year, 
Beth Zanamoyer, attendance clerk at West Brunswick High School. Yeah. Extraordinary indeed. Operations and support staff keep us moving. Literally, in some cases. Could be something technical, could be on the roads. The three finalists for operations and support staff employee of the year are a green light when we're seeing red. Please stand when I call your name. Matt Ardell, Help Desk Operations. I don't think Matt made it out tonight. A round of applause for Matt. I've called him many times. Hey, Matt, it's me again. He's like, Daniel, I know that voice. What do you want this time? Can't get my computer to turn on. <laughs> Alex Auerbach, Ken, Tech Support, West Region, where are you at? <laughs> Alex, you make it out here. <laughs> and your 2018 Operation Support Employee of the Year, I know he's here, Walter Maxson, bus driver, transportation, Walter. <laughs> Walter, let me tell you something. He, the, I was told by, uh, by his, uh, the principal of one of the schools in his transportation with Molly, uh, she told me when I was checking in to, uh, on Walter, she said that, that he is an extraordinary, like, proactive supporter uh, and role model for students as well. So not only is this man driving buses around, one of the hardest jobs out there, uh, no, I mean, hands down. He's also, you know, supporting the kids, doing more, going above and beyond, something that, uh, that resonates with all of our employees over here. Our next recognition category is our instructional assistance of the year. Please stand when I call your name. Janet is called Belleville Elementary. Becky King, Waccamaw School. Laura Bridgers, Down Creek Elementary. Ashley Campbell, Bolivia Elementary. North Brett Bellamy, Southport Elementary School in the house. <laughs> Teresa Christopher, Union Elementary. Alicia Mintz, Lincoln Elementary. You got her in the back. Sarah Callaghan, Virginia Williamson Elementary School. <laughs> Lindy Ivy, Supply Elementary. <laughs> Connie Kennedy, Leland Middle School. <laughs> Barbara Vickery, Cedar Grove Middle School. <laughs> Shona Prendergast. South Brunswick Middle School. <laughs> Tamra Hill, Shalom Middle School. <laughs> Laura Daniels, West Brunswick High School. <laughs> Millie Hart, South Brunswick High School. <laughs> Nathaniel Anderson, North Brunswick High School. And your 2018 Brunswick County Schools Instructional Assistant of the Year. I saw him here. He's here. John Ford Jr. Jesse May Rowan. <laughs> Another one I was told is an extremely good role model to our kids. Your first year as a teacher is known as your rookie year. It's an exciting time, surely full of memories as you uh, finally get that foot in the door and start doing what, you, what you're passionate about. Those memories, also some learning curves maybe along the way. Please stand when I call your name. Abigail Baza, Belleville Elementary School. <laughs> Missy Williams, Jesse May Monroe Elementary. 
Nikki Marlowe, Walk em All School. Leanna Hatcher, Town Creek Elementary. Emily Tate, Bolivia Elementary School. Felicia Perez, Lincoln Elementary School. Amber Beeman, Virginia Williamson Elementary School. Barbara Ashworth, Supply Elementary School. Caitlin Young, Leland Middle School. Abby Daniel, South Brunswick Middle School. Shelby Leonard, Brunswick County Early College High School. Logan Walcott, The Coast, Center of Applied Sciences and Technology. <laughs> Allison Brown, South Brunswick High School. <laughs> and your 2018 Brunswick County Schools Rookie of the Year, Natalie Gavin, Shalom Middle School. <laughs> So now I want you not no longer a rookie. You're official. You just get the title teacher. Extraordinary. Educator. They are the front line, sending countless hours, spending countless hours, in and out of the classroom. A big one, out of the classroom. They give our students the tools they need to succeed. Here are your 2018 teachers of the year. Please stand when your name is called. Michelle Alice Moore. Belleville Elementary. <laughs> Stephanie Fry, Jesse May Monroe. <laughs> Daphne Mintz, Welcome Oscar. <laughs> Settle Dawkins, Town Creek Elementary. Elizabeth Smith, Bolivia Elementary. <laughs> Jacob Thimble, Union Elementary. <laughs> Barbara Brewer, Lincoln Elementary. <laughs> Kristen Hill, Virginia Williamson Elementary. <laughs> Jackie Brock, Supply Elementary. Brenda Flowers, Leland Middle School. <laughs> Tracy Leonard, South Brunswick Middle School. <laughs> Leah Freer, Shalom Middle School. <laughs> Ashan Aggressive, The Coast, Center of Applied Sciences and Technology. Deanna Bowie, West Brunswick High. <laughs> Kathy Johnson, South Brunswick High. <laughs> First Sergeant, U.S. Army, retired, George Williams, North Brunswick High. <laughs> and then the final three, one from each category. Elementary, middle, and high school. Angela Jordan, Brunswick County Early College High School. She cannot be with us tonight. In a round of <laughs> Trish Gilliland, Cedar Grove Middle School. She cannot make it tonight as well, but you know who could make it? Our Brunswick County Schools Teacher of the Year. Your 2018 Brunswick County Schools Teacher of the Year, Claire Harrington, Southport Elementary. Come on up. Claire is off to 
to a phenomenal start. You'll hear more about that in just a second. and was a pit and 
students who provided the complete instructional process for students in construction that could not be done through simulation. He is truly representative of the type of employee that should be recognized for dedicated service and a person that goes above and beyond. to honor your service to our children, John W. Thompson, Rosa County Board of Education, December 7, 2010 to December 4, 2018. And I don't know if all of you can see this, but it's really nice.
matter of 15 or 20 minutes, I developed a whole new regard for brevity. <laughs> so, uh, eight years ago when I started, uh, I believed in my heart that there was no higher calling than in public service than serving uh, the constituencies of public education as teachers, children, parents, and the community. I still believe that today. And I will, well, I will miss uh, the opportunity and privilege of serving, but I will never forget the wonderful time I've had here and all the great people I've met and uh, got to know. So thank you all. website to be legally compliant by, by, by statute and also have those that need to be submitted to the state submitted to the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
noticed in reading through a lot of the school improvement plans that many of the principals are um, planning to have reading and math foundations uh, professional development for their staff. Do you know at this time when that will occur? That should be taking place actually right now. Right now. We just started to sign a contract for that um, yesterday, today, the day I signed it. And okay. the reading foundation is going on. Um, Ms. Johnson was here and she's taking care of that at the actual OWG. Thank you. That was some, that's going to be submitted to the state to try to get reimbursement for from hurricane damage? Uh, this is not no. hurricane damage. Okay. It, it's just that the field over, over years has uh, uh, needs some help. <laughs> um, any other questions? I make a motion. Uh, 
we had three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in the bond budget, and we also had another twenty-five thousand that was right in the capital outlay budget. So this is totally funded by tennis, uh, tennis funding. Motion approved. All right, motion by Mr. Miller. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Fenton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. And the resolution regard, requesting support for Hurricane Florence recovery. The 13 school districts in the southeast region are presenting resolution to their boards of education in response to uh, the hurricane, and there are few areas in which the resolution will uh, affect it, the board, from the board, the boards of education, and also when this goes to legislation, it's a request for this to be carried out. The first of which is to hold harmless these 13 um, districts from state testing, accountability standards. Second is to hold harmless the districts for federal accountability standards for the 18-19 uh, school year. And in the third, third piece of this, to hold harmless these districts for uh, a planning allotments based on average daily membership. In addition to that, the resolution speaks to our transportation system to hold our efficiency ratings harmless, again, based on uh, the current year, the better of 2017-18 or 18-19. Also, it is to restore our system facilities pre-hurricane to, to pre-hurricane status, and also to restore our financial flexibility to pre-hurricane status. These are the pieces of the, re of the resolution that all 13 districts in the Southeast region are submitting to their boards for approval. And we'll see if we can get that approved by our board tonight, Madam Chair. Um, it's about a three-page document, but it's something that's been, well, it's been submitted by 13 other counties and most of them. I, yeah, I went through each one of the major bullets for the resolution. Right. Okay, any other questions? All right, if not, do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. All right, Mr. Lemon, do I have a second? Second. All right, Mr. Miller, all in favor? Uh, any opposed? All right. And now on to budget amendments. Our lovely Ms. Kay Hill. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, we have several budget amendments for the board's consideration tonight. Um, the first one is state number three. The first few items are uh, routine in nature uh, that we receive annually. Uh, I'll skip down to uh, the school safety grant. Um, this is a, a new grant that was received uh, as, as a part of the safety initiative that the state put through for $56,380, and that will secure security cameras as well as iPads. Uh, the next item, um, the principal bonuses, uh, those were paid last month. This is to put the, Monday, the uh, funding in place. Developmental day tuition for the EC program, that's a, a uh, common item on this time of year. Uh, then another new grant, a CTE grade expansion grant uh, of $50,000, which will fund uh, another CDC position for CTE. Eric, then that is um, CDC. What does it stand for? Career Development Board. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then school connectivity of $149,000. That's uh, this is the time of year where that funding comes comes down. Any questions on that one? The next one is state number four. And this is the time of year where uh, DPI uh, trims our allotment up with charter schools. So at the beginning of the year, they take off of our allotment what they project the charter schools uh, ADM is going to be, and then they true up after first month enrollment. And so this is uh, reducing our budgets um, for that. But then there's also a line near the bottom, the second from the bottom, is $173,760, which is uh, Hurricane Florence relief funding for the Child Nutrition Program. So during the year, the days that uh, schools were closed, no revenue was being generated, but employees were receiving pay. 
So this helps offset that cost for the child nutrition program. The next one, uh, capital number five, this is to record uh, replacement buses that the state uh, provided, seven. Um, and then uh, the Southport Elementary track, the board approved that contract uh, last month, and this is uh, to appropriate the funding to pay uh, for that contract. And the last one, special revenue number two, this is uh, to record some uh, carryover donations from last year, uh, and also to record new revenue for Medicaid reimbursement program. Um, and then also we have five, one, two, three, four, five uh, donations to our schools. Um, one is uh, the ATMC grant to provide the VC funding. Then there's a St. Philip's Episcopal donation. Uh, and then a very special one, uh, Douglas Hawes, uh, came to my office actually a couple of weeks ago. He is uh, the husband of a, um, a, a, his wife was a teacher in our schools for many, many years, and she passed away last year. He wanted to donate $10,000, uh, 1000 to each of our uh, media centers in our elementary schools, and uh, it was very touching uh, for me to, to hear that story. Um, and so we have that as well as a STEM donation and then a, a donation for uh, computer equipment from Landfall Grant for Belleville and Jesse May Monroe. Uh, next month, I believe it's will be on the agenda to invite these folks uh, to be recognized by the board for their donations to our school system. Her name is uh, Phoebe Hall. Yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 holiday events that are taking place in our district and our schools. Um, Ms. Ennis, she emailed all of you, I think, around the 30th of November, a listing of all of the things that were taking place, and we definitely hope to see as many of you who can to come out and support our students in the schools for these holiday events. And yes, the list I have and the email you have, they are numerous. You can so, do about two a day. Yeah, you can, really, <laughs> you can do about two a day. That's a good option. Uh, so there are plenty of us, too, plenty of them to attend. Um, in addition to that, I just wanted to let you know that our high school ROTC teams from north, south, and west are, will be participating this weekend in the competition, rifle competitions down in Lex at Lexington High School, I think that's in South Carolina. Um, so let's give them our support on that as well. And that will conclude all of the announcements that I have for this evening. All right, thank you. I'll let that fall, but I have a motion for closed session. Mr. Benton, a second? Second. All right, all in favor? 